What's up guys, this is Ashnox, it's time to summon Fairy Tail Tenebrion, my first account, and I have a lot of speed and effectiveness on my gear that I want to put on her on this account. The question is, am I going to join the 121 club to get this limited hero? And what about her artifact? Will I get Fairy Tail for a nightmare? It's gonna get buffed, it's gonna be pretty sick, so uh, let's see, let's see if I get lucky here. I do have enough bookmarks. But yeah, it, it, it took a long time till she showed up again, of course, it's a year. And uh, I definitely should have summoned for this hero when, when she first showed up. Uh, she's gonna fit right in this account, you know, with 115 base speed, not the best of base speed to contest, you know, uh, heroes like Assassin, Sid, stuff like that. But if you fight a team that doesn't have like super high base speed on their heroes, you could always ban like a hero that might contest your speed. You just open up against them. If they have immunity set, I mean, she can take that right off. And then you can do the redirected provoke, which means that they are going to attack the uh, hero on your team that has the highest amount of health. Oh, I can't skip this. Come on, baby. Please be her artifact. Come on. Oh, yes. Perfect. Perfect. So the fixed damage, it goes up. It's a 100% chance of triggering. I mean, after the buff, it's going to be 60% chance to remove a buff from the enemy when you use a, an attack that is an extra attack, you know, uh, so which is her skill number two. I believe it works for a dual attack, you know, if she gets called into a dual attack. So, uh, you know, not going to happen often, but it's something, right? It's mostly for uh you know removing a buff when you use the skill number two it's a hundred not a hundred percent chance but still uh if they're trying to you know uh stabilize like like remove debuffs off of themselves and start to buff themselves back up then of course it, it could be pretty uh helpful if it does trigger it's something that wasn't there that will make the artifact better so of course i'll be showcasing it uh and we'll see what kind of uh, performance we'll get out of that thing. So I'm going to be uh, scaling this hero up to plus 15. I have her at plus 15 on my third account. But on the first account, it's definitely a different ball game. I have different heroes here. Um, the play style is very high offense. You know, you mess them up, maybe do some control. But it's mostly about throwing a bunch of high damage at them. Not really cleave. More like... Uh, single target burst cleaving it, you know it, it's a rough time it's definitely super rough you need insane gear and as a free-to-play player even if i'm a day one player it's not enough you know you push the leagues in world arena i mean they're just gonna stomp on you they can stall it they can definitely mess you up uh using so many different ways uh, so yeah mixing it up you know having some control doing some single target burst damage stuff like that so in this video i'm going to actually uh, build her and we'll see what type of stats i can have on her so uh yeah i do have quite a bit of speed i'm wondering how much speed she's going to have and how much effectiveness is she going to have so i have her artifact which is good now i'm uh, 31 summon so i get her guarantee if I can get her before that, that'd be cool because I don't have too many Covenant bookmarks on this account. Looks like I might have to do a bunch of Secret Shop refreshes in not too long. Oh my god. Okay, so 10 summons left until I guarantee the hero. If I could get another artifact, that'd be pretty cool. So it's going to be more fixed damage. Oh, okay. Is it, go Is it her artifact? Come on, man. Oh, it's not. Justice for all. You know what? I think I got this thing maxed out. I do have this artifact maxed out on this account. That's the only art, uh, only um, account where I have it maxed out. Just because I was able to pull it uh, quite a few times. And I believe it was from Mystic Summons. It was part of a rot rotation. And I just managed to pull a bunch of those. Yo, what is up? And uh, yeah, of course, I, I had to pity the uh, five-star Moonlight hero. Yes! That's it. Got two of them now. Uh, and I just kept on pulling a bunch of Justice for All, sadly. I mean, sadly. It's not bad. I used it on Falconer Clury for a while. It was pretty cool. 
but uh, I don't think I'm really using it anymore. Okay, so uh, wait, 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 I'm not gonna do an extend here. Let's go and uh, that's it, guarantee seven. So let's see, man. 15 skill ups, and then let's put uh, some gear. I'm really curious about uh, what kind of stats I'll have on her. And I definitely would like to try her with like more of a damage oriented build, having more offense on her. I feel like uh, I fought some fairy tale Tenebra that were dealing some decent damage. I mean, you have to remember that she's gonna be controlling the enemy team on top of like, you know, stacking them with a bunch of debuffs. You know, a defense break from the skill 2 potentially, silence on healable. Then, of course, you got the Redirected Provoke on skill 3 with enable to buff debuff that can remove immunity set off of them if they don't have a barrier to protect it. And maybe you're able to deal enough damage to even break the barrier of like a Fawn and Cecilia before actually removing your buff, which is going to be immunity uh, set. And then you can have the uh, the redirected provoke and enable to buff debuff so pretty solid if you're able to do something like that but I, I don't know if you're gonna have enough damage to be able to actually break the barrier because some teams are really thick and her multipliers are not that good that's the thing it's about her artifact plus like the skill three and the skill two uh, combo and after that she's pretty weak she kind of dealt uh, she uh, did her thing so uh, most, of, uh, most of the time, the enemy will just ignore her at that point. Okay, let me uh, grab her and uh, let's power her up. With one copy of her artifact, you know, at plus 15, you're going to deal 1,125 fixed damage, which will be happening after, right? Uh, so that's pretty cool. That's something that uh, cannot be reduced by damage mitigation. So when you don't have that much, you know, uh, stats on a hero like attack, uh, crit damage, uh, you can still deal a decent amount of damage because of this artifact. And uh, of course, this is an artifact that is sort of like made for her. Uh, there might be other heroes that are coming out uh, that will be able to use this artifact, put, put it to good use. But uh, so far, you know, she seems to be the better hero to be wearing it. So you're only getting 75 fixed damage after limit breaking this artifact and it's definitely not that much so you might want to keep the second copy for a mage hero that might be able to put it to good use later down the line instead of limit breaking it but in my case i'm just gonna do it i might regret it uh, later down the line if i decide to pull for a hero that requires uh, that could put this artifact to good use especially if it's like it like a best in slot or something like that so it's always wiser to keep that second um, copy right just keep it because the, the increase is definitely not that much and you might just end up regretting it later down the line man because these artifacts are so hard to get and you have to wait for a year for the, the limited hero to come back with the limited artifact so yeah much better if you just you know, wait it out just in case. Okay, let's power her up. The thing is, you don't actually need to get this hero to six star unless you're really trying to squeeze the damage out of this hero. If you don't have any skill ups or not too many skill ups into her, uh, you might want to keep her at five star. You know, a lot of players do that because she's about the control. She's about, you know, the turn, the first turn and then like when she triggers the skill number two after she does that her wombo combo after she does her combo like yeah it, it, she's not impactful and uh, a lot of times they're gonna ignore her so she's not a big deal right to bring to six star unless you're going all out on this hero of course uh do i even have oh man okay that is uh that's exactly what i need so six star and i don't even know man when i do I, I haven't even checked on my other account what i actually need oh i do have the catalyst here so that's good let's uh bring her to level 60 first and i'm really curious what kind of stats i'm gonna have so here are her stats before awakening she's missing speed 115 speed it's definitely Pretty solid, to be honest. 115 for a mage, because she can wear Tagiel's Ancient Book. 
she can wear her own artifacts she can wear abyssal crown you know i did showcase her i reviewed her at the same time using abyssal crown and i said i'm going to you know showcase her using her own artifact especially after it does get buffed which uh, we're gonna have to wait a bit longer for that it's it's about to happen actually uh so yeah i'm really curious about her performance you know with the stats i'm gonna be able to get on her but that's a hero that you can just like drop all your speed gear on and if you have like spe super high speed and you do have some decent effectiveness you can definitely be very deadly and then the enemy will have to ban her so you can bait a ban into world arena because of this hero i mean you can bring her in all sorts of PV pvp content arena you know you can bring her in guild war and uh, if you don't get resisted right the redirected provoke is super um, powerful very uh, valuable valuable debuff right there and i mean if you can land the fans break if you can land uh you know silence is definitely a game changer so it definitely helps you to uh to win some battle and there it is okay so uh let's see let's see what kind of stats i'll be able to get so you can see that um the stats that she has you know her base stat getting some free effectiveness 18 percent definitely helps quite a bit because it's it's about getting as much effectiveness as possible so you don't have to worry about the resist right and the enemy might have a lot of effect resistance and if you're able to land that redirected provoke start to cripple the enemy especially if you land it you know you provoke a cleanser and a catas uh, you know angel momorancy uh, made chloe it's such a game breaking move right there that combo skill three and s2 man is very very strong but you need to actually make it happen and you know it happens real quick it's turn one and then like not even turn two and then the s2 triggers and that's it she did her thing i forgot to skill her up let's do it let's skill her to plus 15 looks like i have what i need and you know the minus one turn cooldown is definitely a big deal here you're going to be able to cycle her you know if you have her at six star she does have maybe some stability increase. Maybe you're able to keep her longer in play. Maybe the enemy sort of like ignores her. And you might be able to start, you know, using skill two a few more times. And if you're able to get the skill three to go again, that, that is definitely pretty strong. So, you know, the, the cooldown on this thing is four turns. But the thing is, her skill 1 allows her to cycle it because the soul burn is grants an extra turn. It's 20 souls, but it's pretty powerful. You can get out of a silence, you know, into the skill number 3. Maybe you open, you have 20 souls, soul burn S1 into the skill 3. You don't have the silence anymore, so that is definitely powerful. Uh, you have poison here. This is not a big deal. Uh, to be honest, it's... It's going to be better for PvE content, but maybe landing some poisons could be protecting some other debuffs that are already on the target. Uh, but yeah, no big deal about this thing here. It's definitely the skill 3 and the skill 2, uh, the most impactful skill that she has in her set. So yeah, I'm just going to plus 15 her. Not a lot of players will have this hero you know at plus 15 this is a pretty high investment right there but i feel like i can definitely put her to good use she's definitely a game-changing hero if you do have the stats on her if they haven't banned her in in world arena you know they always have to worry about this hero it's going to be in the back of their minds you know is she gonna be faster than me is she gonna land the redirected provokes is my cleanser going to be provoked like i like they're not going to be able to deal with all the debuffs she's going to be throwing at them if uh, you go first with a Fairytale Tenebria. It, it is definitely very deadly, the uh, combo that she's able to pull off. And if you have a bunch of provokes throughout the battle, right, then you're going to be able to trigger her skill too often, which is going to be free damage with her artifact that's fixed damage on top of that. It deals damage based on the target's max health as well. So like all that stuff together... It, makes up for some decent damage i would say on top of everything else that she does skill ups plus three on the skill three is definitely going to be the most important one and then i mean the early skill ups are just one mola so you could go like plus three on skill two plus three and then you could like 
Well, maybe the skill 2 will be triggering more often, especially if you have provokes throughout the battle. So maybe you want to max out skill 3 before uh, finishing the skill number 3, you know? Uh, so plus 3, plus 3, max out skill 2, and then, you know, max out skill 3. Maybe you want to get some skill ups here. I don't know. It really depends uh, if you feel like it's going to be helpful to you. And uh, maybe if you use your NPVE content on top of PvP, uh, so that, that could be uh, some, you know, worthy uh, skill ups, especially the early ones and more chance to poison. You know, poison is very strong, but anyway, it's not going to get into that. So yeah, let me put some gear on her and let's see what kind of stats she's going to have. I'm going to put the gear that is on Ran on Fairytale Tenebria. He has 301 speed. It's because he has such a high amount of base speed that you know i'm able to have over 300 you can see he has quite a bit of effectiveness but fairy tale will have even more it's gonna be pretty decent i'm not gonna be able to land her debuffs on a like a pure cleanser with super high effect resistance sadly but i feel like in terms of like offensive power with the speed and the effectiveness that she's gonna have it's gonna be a pretty solid balance to test all that stuff out on her uh, but yeah, I mean, you'll, you're going to notice like a pretty drastic drop in speed because her base speed at 115 is definitely not as good as Ran. But her kit, if you can get her to go first, she's so dangerous. The thing is, you can still stack speed imprints, you know, with heroes that have a speed memory imprint. And you can definitely get her to something like 300 speed and definitely surprise quite a few players but a lot of them will be, you know, banning her in World Arena. Maybe they have a plan uh, with like super high effect resistance, a cleanser that's reliable, that will be removing all your debuffs. So uh, yeah, there's definitely different ways to handle uh, Fairy Tail Tenebria. So here she is, 283 speed. I'll be pushing that number with some speed imprints. And uh, so ability wise is definitely not high. The attack, it's low, but she has almost 100% crit chance. Some crit damage. The effectiveness, you know, the 152, it's decent. It's decent considering the amount of speed that I have on her. You can see that every piece of gear, almost every piece of gear has some effectiveness, but the priority was to get as much speed as possible, right? So... You know, some of the pieces can definitely be improved, but you guys know how hard it is to actually get speed. If your playstyle is more bruisery, uh, you don't have too many heroes that require speed. Uh, so you can just have those pieces on a hero like Fairytale Tenebria, especially if you have effectiveness on, on those pieces. Now, it's hard to have high offensive power on top of having, you know, super high speed and having super high effectiveness. It's definitely going to be a rough time, but you might be able to get uh, like a set of gear going after quite a few wyvern runs my god it's going to take so many runs though you can see i don't even have effectiveness here but getting some flat attack here and there just because it's really about the uh, initial turn when you open you know you use her as an opener and if you can get that extra bit of damage you know so be it especially if you have very high offensive power heroes paired with her it really depends on your play style. If you want her to stay alive longer or you're just throwing everything at them and trying to make things happen uh, really fast. So yeah, the, like, look at these stats on some of these pieces of gear, especially on the right side. It's really rough to actually get stats like that. But yeah, just getting some more flat, uh, flat attack here. Quite a bit of effectiveness. So this set of gear is pretty decent. Uh, I'll be able to test multiple things. You know, the speed I'll put it to good use, the effectiveness. And we'll see what kind of damage she's able to do. Fixed damage at 1200. It will add up. I don't know how many times I can get her skill 2 to trigger in my battles. It really depends on the provokes that she have inflicted on them. Uh, but yeah, anyways, let us know what you guys think about Fairy Tail Tenebria in the comments section. How was your luck to get this hero? Um, you know, how do you use her in, uh, in PvP? Maybe uh, some places in PvE content. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to uh, see her performance. And um, I, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to be showcasing her before this thing gets buffed. We'll see. But 
it's definitely going to be pretty solid after it gets buffed. It's definitely a nice change that she's going to have. So yeah, definitely stay tuned for the showcase. Man, I have her at plus 15 on two different accounts. That is pretty insane. But a uh, very dangerous hero, man. De definitely very dangerous. And having some imprints would definitely help. I mean, some free effectiveness. Uh, every bit count, man. When you're trying to fight how much effect resistance that they have on them with as much effectiveness as possible. Which can even have more health for front and back. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Anyways... That's it for this one. I'm Ashenized. Good luck with all y'all. Do peace out for now.